I mean, we're talking about maintenance. Uh, it's never going to be 100% perfect. I'm uh, going. You know, I'm here with uh, Tommy Hood today and Doug Matheson, and uh, we're over at the Canadian Northern Railroad, and uh, we've been just chatting about visiting other railroads and some of the fun we have in terms of operating. But now, as a layout owner and a fellow that's involved in setup quite a bit, Doug uh, and, and layout owner Tom, um, there's a lot you have to do before people come and run your railroad. Oh yes. Good. Uh, uh, what are the kinds of things that you like to see uh, in place before we uh, start a, an operating session? Well, um, uh, operationally, the first problem is the cars will have to be, able to be properly placed for yeah. the computer to set the thing up. Then you make sure that uh, the track is clean and, and yeah. it, everything will run properly, and uh, and you hope that the cars all stay together. But it's a continuing job as you start the operation to, if it's a small detail in a car, like a derailment, uh, see if you can, by looking at the car to see if there's anything you can do to fix that car on the spot. Right. If it can't be fixed on the spot, back it goes to the workbench. So how do you make aware of it? I mean, how many pieces of rolling stock have you got on your railroad? About 650. Okay, so this is not something where you go along looking at each one before each op session to see what's what? No, so you can't what, do that. You so what sort of system do you use to try to figure out what's going on? We basically have to depend on the, basically is the word we used before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have to uh, make sure that the operator, when he runs his train, he keeps an eye on the train. If a car continuously derails, there's something yeah. wrong with that car. Yeah. If all the cars tend to derail in the same spot, there's something wrong with the track at that particular spot. Sure. A switch point, a frog, a, a dirty frog. Yeah. You know, it could be anything. But it's something to take a look at and make a note of as you're driving the train along. Yeah. And then go back the next time and make sure you fix each one of those problem areas or problem cars. And then... So oh, it's a bit of a team effort in that sense exactly. that, that you have to really rely on the people that come every day yes. to uh, right. let you know. So you don't have in your system a uh, maintenance schedule where you got car number 1066, it's its turn to come in for no, maintenance? It's, hope, it's impossible. 650 <laughs> cars, you're just, you'd be up against it constantly. Yeah. Um, mostly, mostly my problem is the... The operator who drops a car on the workbench with no instructions about what went wrong with it. Sure. Because then you had to turn the thing and try 50 million tests on it. Yeah. Um, so to help them out, uh, how do, what do they typically do to make you aware? Leave me a small note of some kind, yeah. either attached to the car or having the car sitting on that piece of paper. So you have a piece of paper that's over about your workbench. Yes, that they and a just, pencil handy. Yeah. So um, how do you think people are aware that that's there? Um, some are. Yeah. Some will never be aware. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do, eh? <laughs> well, we're at all different yeah. people, so we all do different things. Now, on your railroad, too, you've got uh, how many? You got a lot of locomotives. About fifty. Yeah, and uh, they must demand a lot of maintenance in a way. Surprisingly, not. Yeah. It's um, if you keep after these things, little things as you go along, mm -hmm. and oil them once in a while, right? Make sure they are properly lubricated. There is not a whole lot of maintenance on a locomotive, unless it gets damaged somehow. It uh, runs into another car or yeah. derails and breaks off a, a little piece of brass someplace. Uh, yeah, you have to fix the it. bane of their existence about uh, running trains is the problem of dirt on wheels and tracks, because obviously everything runs by electricity. Uh, your layout is quite large. You've got a large fleet of locomotives and rolling stock. What is the uh, the solution for you in terms of dealing with that particular issue? The, the best thing seems to be if we uh, run the trains constantly, as yeah. we do. We do run once a month, so the track does keep reasonably clean. Yeah. If there is a problem, clean that particular piece of track. You don't need to clean the whole railroad each time. Yeah. I don't think I've complete, uh, vacuumed or done the whole railroad in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But certainly trying to keep the main line. I do have a vacuum cleaner car that I run around occasionally which vacuums up the roadbed. Yeah. You actually can see that where as you went. So it's like a dust remover, is that it, what it's happens? A, it's a small vacuum cleaner inside of a freight car. So this is uh, the, would re help reduce the number of vibration and particles that get up on top of the rails? Yes, is that the idea? It'll either suck them up or sweep yeah. them to the side. 
But you actually can see on our inner yard, for example, which track the little vacuum cleaner's gone down. Is it definitely a darker color than the rest of the railroad? Now, when you look at the uh, the rail itself, um, is there anything that you do specifically to keep it clean? Well, I run little pads on each on about a dozen of my freight cars. Right. And they're constantly running with a small pad underneath it. And uh, what kind of pad is dirty. that? What kind of pad is that? It's a. Uh, I think it's um. Who's the scenery guy? Yeah. It's like a homo soap pad, or no? It's, it's just a small little. Um, Foam pad. Oh, a foam pad, okay. And uh, they clip to the axle of the car. All right. So I take my 50 foot car so I know which cars. So it's a dry it. clean it's and a, it's, it's just dry. friction based? Yes. Yeah. But with a train going over the line two yeah. or three times a night, Yeah. for example, the track does stay quite clean. Yeah. Now you operate once a month though. Yes, once a month. And then you also have a setup session where trains are running. Do you run trains in between that? I'd like to run trains more often than I can. Yeah. Uh, the major problem being the computer itself. Because right. once you've got the computer knows where all the cars are, yeah. if you start messing around with that location, it makes a quick mess of the, uh, the chance to operate the next time. So I tend to have to run a string of cars. I'll take a string of cars in, in the yard and take that out and run around just for fun. Yeah, but you got to put them back where you've got to put them back where but, and usually you got to remember which end the, the car was at the front end of the yard. Because the <laughs> trains are normally have been set up to be in specific switchable order. So when you got a large operation and, you, and you're running trains and it seems to be fairly maintenance free with the odd s circumstance yeah. of uh, cars, I guess quality is a lot to do with it too in terms of uh, not having a lot of maintenance with locomotives and cars. Good, good types yes. of trains. Well, one thing I did very early on was I got rid of all my plastic wheels. Yeah. I found they were collecting dirt much faster than a metal wheel does. I don't mm. know why. Yeah. But it also deposits that dirt everywhere. Yes. And uh, so the metal wheels seemed to solve that problem. Yeah. I went then to the, uh, the called fine scale flange or widths, wheel widths. Yes. And that was interesting. I ran an experiment with about 25 cars, knowing which cars had them on, and to see if they operate any differently. Other than rolling a little freely, I think, mm -hmm. um, we had no big differences. So I've got a lot of my cars now have the Code 84, Code 84 wheels or Code 88. The finer flange ones. The fine flange. Flange. Now, what about couplers? Uh, That's they... a constant problem. That's yeah. a maintenance problem. Yeah. And uh, I, as we watch trains go around the railroad, the ones particularly at eye level, you can then see how far they are drifting. And if the one is low, fix it. Yes. Don't wait until it derails. So that's this uh, NMRA standard kind of thing that you look at, or you just try to match them up? Oh, I use a standards gauge to yeah. do that, but uh, mostly it's visual. Uh -huh. uh, I carry sometimes a piece of cardboard around my pocket, and just if I can get the cardboard underneath the, the two drop um, flanges, yes. uh, it's probably going to be okay. If it's hanging down lower than that, fix it, because <laughs> it'll catch the next switch you try to go through. And I guess you must have uh, quite a supply of coupler springs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> In a word, yes. They tend to disappear very quickly. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, uh, it, a lot of it, I guess, has to do with bad eyesight or something. But <laughs> well, getting old. Too, you know, when help. you're when you're uh, dealing with uncoupling and using a stick or some other mechanism, if you're delicate with the car, it it, it seems to come apart easily. But with the old jab and poke system, blindly trying to get them in. <laughs> causes springs and couplers to fall and things like that. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, you, you, the, the, you were indicating to me the other day that uh, in, on a lot of pieces of your rolling stock that you have uh, your coupler pockets are actually glued on versus uh, screwed. Yes. Um, is that a personal choice or is it just because of the nature of the car that you purchased? Most of it's um, by choice. Yeah. I've had very good luck. I make sure I use a uh, glue that has some flexibility, yeah. like plyo bond or a, a contact cement. Right. And I have very few problems of those ever coming free. So the bottom of the pocket, and uh, how about the like? How do you get the whole coupler pocket to go together then? Well, I do. I assemble the coupler into the coupler box first. Yeah. And then put a dab of cement on top of it, or the glue, okay. and, and a bit on the car, and then make the contact. So you're using, you're using contact cement to, to put the coupler box together as well? No, I use uh, standard plastic glue. Standard plastic glue. 
So they they could pop apart, I guess. Yes. To, to, to a good prevent. slam a few times. Yeah. Uh, uh, a good poke, a good slam. Absolutely, <laughs> now, that'll do a good job. Yeah. Um, How often does that really happen, though? That, like when you're you've got these six hundred cars and twenty operators, do you find what's the quantity that you were looking at fixing uh, in maybe every session? After one a session, two. only one or two, eh? Yeah. Well, that's pretty good then. I guess that's. Uh, Either because of good operators or good strong glue. Something, yeah. <laughs> good strong I put, glue. And I do often put screws in them if, if it's possible. Yeah. Some are easy to do. The other uh, thing is everybody talks about uh, car weights and getting them right and things like that. Is that something that do yes, you find is a problem? Yes, that is quite important. Yeah. Both ways. If they're too light, they're going to derail on you. If they're too heavy, they'll cause other cars to come off. Yeah. So I tend to watch the weights pretty carefully. Okay. And... Uh, I guess in many ways, depending on the, the manufacturer of the car, that's easier to do uh, than in other circumstances. Yes. I uh, say I don't like people picking up the cars and turning them upside down so they can watch the, the underframe. So I will use the underframe space yeah. to add weight in there, whether it be uh, lead shot or small pieces of metal or something to get the weight down. Yeah. Uh, on the assumption that people aren't going to be picking the cars up and turning them over. Mm-hmm. Because what you can see by track side is just the side of it, so I can make sure nothing mm -hmm. shows from so the side. Yeah, so you're talking like gondolas and uh, flat, flat cars. cars and things yes. like that. Tank but cars it, become a problem, except you can put it inside yeah. the tank car. I guess you, if you had a needle and you made a hole in the bottom, you could fill <laughs> so it. When you're looking at this uh, whole system, then you've just been talking about maintenance and that. Um, do you have a team that helps you with that? Oh, definitely. Um, my knowledge of uh, electronics is not good, yeah. and I have a couple of good friends who who know how to troubleshoot this. Um, other than that, um, after most electrics on the railroad, mm -hmm. uh, the electronics into the locomotives gets a little more difficult, especially right. at my age. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to see. <laughs> I guess, eh? So. Um when when you have a DCC system that yes. you operate on, and uh, from what I understand, it's lens system. Lens, but it's uh, quite a large system, quite complex electronically. Yes, again, a friend, David Steer, is yeah, is the w wizard for that. Okay, and what's your backup plan? <laughs> Praying. <laughs> Praying, yeah. <laughs> And then the locomotive maintenance and installation of uh, Again, decoders and things like that. Throughout yeah. in Cornwall. So, on, on, I guess when you look at it, uh, it's as a layout owner, it's nice to ha have uh, a good teams of people around well, you to make it work properly. Absolutely. And more fun, too. You have more people to jibe and kibitz with. Yeah. Now, on the operations side, you were not a, an operator in the beginning. You no, were, I was not. You, uh, you like to build your track and run trains. Uh, nice My whole big idea long. why I have the railroad as large as it is, is I like to walk along beside the train yeah. and watch it. So what happened? You became uh, interested in I operations. Got By who? <laughs> <laughs> All combination of fellow beside me here, Doug Matheson. Yeah. And uh, Bill Scobie and a few other guys. They yeah. all wanted to say, stop running train rounds in circles and let's see if it, what this railroad can do. And we right. evolved the railroad for that. It meant a few yeah. changes of switches and um, new, so you, new industries in different places. And so you sort of acquiesced to the gang and said, sure. uh, hey guys, uh, you want an op system? <laughs> you put it in place and I'll run Pretty trains. Cool. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs>